I'm Katie Corianos, the Public Involvement Manager for Mid Valley Highway Phase 2 Environmental Assessment, and I'm joined here today by our study team to walk through the details of the draft highway alignments. These draft alignments have been compiled based on a number of things, the original EIS recommendation, engineering and environmental data, as well as public input received during our public scoping period earlier this year. It's important to note that we are also evaluating a no build alternative as part of the study. Please keep in mind as we go through this today that these are very preliminary drafts and no decisions have been made. We encourage you to provide feedback on the alignments that you see between now and August 1st to help us shape the next steps of this study. Each draft alignment that we'll be going through will still need to be analyzed and refined further before a final alignment is recommended late this year. If you have any questions about what you see today or have any need for more information, please call the project team at 435-269 2440 or email us at midvalley at utah.gov. Nicole is now going to walk us through environmental resources and other considerations that we're taking a look at during the study. Thank you, Katie. My name is Nicole Tolley. I'm the consultant project manager for preparation of the environmental document. So I wanted to start us off by first identifying some of the key environmental resources that we need to consider as we evaluate these draft alignments. The first is historic architecture is shown here as orange squares. These represent historic structures that are likely eligible for the National Register of Historic Places. There's also a floodplain in the study area. Um, there are wetlands within the study area, mostly at the north end here. And we also have agricultural protection areas. We also take a look at other key features, including the airport, the motorsports campus, there's Sitla land within the area, and the Twila Army Depot. The UNEF pipeline, which has a 50 foot easement, also runs through this area, um, as well as the planned Lakeview Business Park. The Twila County landfill, which has since been closed, um, but we still need to consider it for geotechnical reasons. The gravel pit, the city stockpile area, and that's it. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the time over to Jeremy to walk us through the alignments. I'll go ahead and turn off most of these key resources. Um. Thanks, Nicole. My name is Jeremy Gilbert. I'm the design engineer for UDOT that is going through and looking at the different alternatives that we can provide and uh, evaluate for this area. So we, we took some, uh, as we were providing some draft alignments, we took into those environmental resources and those key features that Nicole just showed us and, and developing and, and determining where we could provide um, a continuation of the already built portion of Mid Valley. Um, the, we looked through as we provided these, we looked at using the federal and UDOT standards and procedures on providing the, the locations of these alignments, and, as well as uh, continuing the look and feel of, of what Mid Valley already does and, and continuing that through there. So what we want to do is we wanted to create that freeway uh, type facility from the existing portion of Mid Valley down to SR 112, about halfway through the, the study area. From that uh, portion, we would transition these alignments from that freeway portion down to a an arterial, which is just a, a local or normal road that is um, no separation between them. We have some pictures to kind of um, illustrate what those look like. The first is a, a picture taken from Mid Valley. It shows what a, a freeway, the look and feel we're trying to accomplish. This has a, a wider impact, um, takes a lot more space, but we a uh, little safer facility provides higher speeds and a separation between the directions of travel, the northbound and southbound direction. The arterial, we, we have a picture uh, out on SR36, which shows that the it's connected. There's no separation between the road uh, it takes a little less spacing between there, it's lower speeds, and it allows for greater connectivity um, for developments, signals. Uh, it just allows for more opportunities for access along the road. Um, so we took kind of these considerations um, between the standards, the, the environmental features, the other key features that are through there to develop some draft alignments, and then we took these uh, um, alignments and evaluated the, the planning and traffic elements of them to see how they would be utilized. 
And I'll let our traffic engineer discuss that a little bit. Thank you, Jeremy. My name is Ivan Hooper. I'm the consultant traffic lead for this project. As we're doing our traffic analysis, we are using a tool called the Utah Statewide Travel Model to project future traffic volumes in the study area. Uh, this model is owned and maintained by UDOT and is regularly updated to reflect the latest plans and land use information. Uh, we've been coordinating directly with them to, to have to use the latest land use projections for the area. For this study, we are looking to 2050 as our horizon year. Uh, so all the numbers we'll be discussing uh, are, are for 2050. So we coded each of these uh, each of the alignments into the model in accordance with the description provided by Jeremy, with it being a freeway on the north end and then transitioning to an arterial around uh, 1000 North or SR 112. Um, for so we, we ran each alignment in the model and we found that the the volumes are very similar between all of them uh, with differences of only two to three thousand vehicles per day between alignments. Um, the alignment at the north from I-80 to SR-138 is projected to carry approximately 26 to 28,000 vehicles per day. Uh, by comparison, the existing road out there today is carrying about 8,000 vehicles per day. The next segment from Oh, SR-138 down to 1,000 a, a north or SR-112 projected to carry 12 to 17,000 vehicles per day. Then from there down to Utah Avenue, 9 to 11,000 vehicles a day. And then from Utah Avenue down to SR-36, approximately three to 5,000 vehicles per day. We've also seen that each of these alignments is projected to have or to reduce traffic on SR 36 by 10 to 15 percent, and which benefit will be quantifying further as the study advances. Uh, with that, I'll let Jeremy talk more about the details of each alignment. Perfect. Thanks. I, I do want to discuss a little bit of in, in detail a little bit more of each alignment. I want to discuss what um, advantages or uh, challenges we had what they were in each one. So the first one would be draft alignment one, which is the original EIS that we have out there. As we built and designed the, the first phase of Mid Valley, um, we, we recognize some of the challenges and, and the changes that have happened throughout there. And the first one is, is obviously that UNF pipeline uh, where the EIS alignment ended up crossing it quite a few times. Uh, the other things as the the timeline between um, the EIS and where we're at today, there's some future developments planned and approved out in the area, and as well as some challenges associated with the, the Twill Army Depot and some rail crossings towards the southern end. Uh, so we wanted to evaluate and, and, and see what alternatives we could provide to reduce or mitigate some of these uh, challenges that were with this EIS alignment. The first draft alignment that we, we came up with for alternative of this was draft alignment two. Uh, we decided to utilize the space that was just west of the airport, which helped to avoid some of those historical properties as well um, to, to come off through there. So keeping that uh, freeway style, connecting to phase one, continuing to the south, um, avoiding some of the future business developments in the area, uh, keeping west of the UNF pipeline, until we connected and keep going south until we connect to SR-112. Um, and then as you know, we discussed, we, we changed from that freeway style to the arterial style. We used the existing corridor of SR-112 and Utah Avenue. We made sure to have a single crossing of the railroad, uh, just one point there. And then as we continue south to connect to SR-36, we, we wanted to choose a corridor, a location that uh, provided compatibility with future developments of the west side of Twila. Um, as we we developed the environmental resources and other key features, we we wanted to see if we could improve upon this draft alignment. So we came up with draft alignment three, where we um, 
wanted no impacts to the UNEF pipeline. Um, so as we, we developed through there, we, we swung east to avoid any crossings along there. That also helped to avoid crossing over the uh, 20 Twilla County landfill um, and provide, you know, mitigate some of the impacts through there. Uh, so very similar to draft alignment two, everything north was along that same corridor going through uh, between the airport and the historic properties, avoiding the future developments. And then as we we um, have that difference going west or excuse me, east of the UNF pipeline connecting to SR-112 and then continuing that as the arterial uh, kept with the same goal of having one crossing of the road line and then having um, the arterial road just west of Twila City to connect to SR-36. In our scoping meeting, we, we heard a lot of comments to evaluate and look at an alignment that utilized the existing corridor and existing features of, of the roads that are out there. So we provided a uh, draft alignment four, which uses Sheep Lane, which is a, a local collector road out there. So we same same methodology. We continued the look and feel, the freeway style of the already built section of, of Mid Valley Highway and continued it along Sheep Lane um, along the, the same corridor and connected it to SR-112. At SR-112, we changed to that arterial style, utilized uh, the section of, of SR-112 and Utah Avenue, and down to um, the west side of Tooele City and connected to SR-36. Uh, wanted to briefly describe the, the volumes we saw on each of these um, freeways and the difference between them on draft alignment two. We saw about um, a 2050 pro projected volumes of 16,000 vehicles per day, excuse me, 14,000 vehicles per day. Draft alignment three, 16,000 vehicles per day. And draft alignment four, about 15,000 vehicles per day. So very, as Ivan had mentioned, very similar in comparison to the, the utilization of those 2050 volumes, um, but there is you know, slight difference between them. In draft alignment four, the, uh, using the existing corridors that are out there, um, there are some challenges that, that are shown through there, as well as multiple crossings along the UNF pipeline, uh, some historical properties, and then also the future developments of the um, business parks, the Utah Motorsports Campus, um, and, and just some different challenges and, and things that we need to consider as we look into this alternative. But overall, uh, we, we're thankful for the input that we received from the public. We're able to, to look at the, the key features and the environmental resources we have out there to look at some different alternatives from, from the original EIS alignment. Thanks, Jeremy. That wraps things up for us today. To let us know what you think about the draft alignments you've seen, visit udot.utah.gov slash midvalley or email midvalley at utah.gov between now and August 1st. As a reminder, no decisions have been made and we need your input to help us refine these alignments. Again, we will identify a preferred alternative that will be available for public review and comment again in late 2022. Thanks so much for watching.